Hello and welcome to episode 230 of my podcast all about knitting and crochet and my yarn shop here in Wiesbaden, Germany. I'm Kiko and today is April 29th, 2024. Today I'm wearing two fairly old pieces. Um, the cowl or loop that I'm wearing is um, called Chor Wochenende Loop, which means choir weekend loop or cowl. And it's a fairly simple loop, scarf or cowl um, that I knit out of one ball of Noro yarn. I think my sister gave that uh, ball to me and I'm not quite sure how big it was. It doesn't really feel like 200 grams, but it was a fairly big one and it had all the colors in one ball of yarn. And I got this pattern out of a Noro magazine. I'm not quite sure whether they use the same yarn. Could have been that they use a different yarn in the uh, magazine. But I like the stitch pattern, which is supposed to be nice on both sides. So it's quite different on both sides, but both sides are nice. So it doesn't really matter which way you wear it. And um, yeah, I knitted during a choir weekend, which is why it has that name. So we spend a whole weekend with uh, with our choir, with my choir, um, practicing, rehearsing and just spending time together. So I, I had lots of time and I'm pretty sure I knit the whole thing in that one weekend. Maybe I did the sewing together afterwards. I don't remember. But I think it, the Ravelry page says something like three days, <laughs> which was in 2015. So it's nine years old. Doesn't look that old. <laughs> I really like it. It has a nice mix of colors and uh, I didn't have to think about color choice or placement or anything because it was just the way it came out of the ball of yarn. And the pullover I'm wearing is called Ringel Pulli, which just means pullover with stripes. And that's uh, from June, July 2012. So quite old pullover. It's from the time when I used to work for Wollerödel, the yarn shop, and we had to knit the shop window display pieces and we had to knit them exactly as per pattern. So the yarn choice and the color choice again was not mine. I had to follow um, the pattern, but we were able to choose the size that we knit. So I was able to knit the pullover to my size. Um, so that the sleeves and everything fit me perfectly. I would never have put these colors together if it had been my choice. <laughs> um, but now that I have the pullover, I've worn it quite often, um, not too often. So the pullover still looks quite good. Maybe I should wear it more often. The yarn is called um, Sienna. It's a pure merino yarn and it's a really nice yarn. Um, as you can see, it holds up really well to what being worn over and over again, washed again and again. It's a machine washable yarn and um, there are some parts like just the black and red I really like. I don't mind this sleeve. I love this part of the sleeve. I probably wouldn't have put the, the um, rose color with the red. But on the whole, it's okay. And uh, so I thought I'll just wear two very colorful pieces together. And um, the colors are quite similar, I think, in the pullover and the loop scarf. So I thought it um, should be too bad. <laughs> yeah, so that's what I'm wearing. Then on to finished objects. I have one finished object. I'm really happy that it's done. And that's the um, Remember Cowl by Nathan Taylor, the sockmetician. It's one of his very beautiful double fat, double knitting patterns. He does a lot with double knitting and double knitting means you can put um, uh, contrast color motifs anywhere you like. You don't have to worry about floats because you always knit both colors. You never have floats. And then you can go from having just very few flowers to where you have very many. And of course, the other side has the same pattern, just in reverse. And um, I really, really like this. I realized today, I one day I'm going to wear the, the cowl and the pullover together because with the black and red, it goes really nicely. Um, I knit the 
pattern almost exactly the way the pattern asks so I chose the same colors but the first change I made is that instead of knitting the knobs that you're supposed to knit in the middle of the flower I put beads um, not on every stitch the part where there are many uh, stitches in the opposite color I only put a bead on every other stitch but uh, with the small flowers where there's just two stitches I put a bead on both the stitches um, I cast on the number of stitches and I knit almost the number of rounds that was asked uh, that was called for in the pattern now the only change I made is that it's very slightly shorter than it should be and that's because I ran out of yarn and uh, I'd said before that if I wasn't wouldn't have been able to finish the flowers I would have started another ball of yarn and actually for the black I did start another ball of yarn but not a new one I still had some leftover yarn from the mystery knit along cowl that I did um, the line dance cowl um, I used the black alpaca silk yarn as well so I had some left over I could use that and um, but then with the red I could actually finish both the top flowers and I still had a little yarn so what I did is I just kept knitting in the um, background colors so red one side black the other side until the red yarn was completely gone and that's the point where I started doing the cast off and I didn't cast off straight away but the moment the red yarn was gone I did one round just with the black knitting all the black stitches and slipping the red ones and then I should have done a sewn bind off with the red yarn but I used the black yarn instead so now basically what it means is that this side has the last round is in black instead of red and um, yeah but it's hardly visible so the the line between the colors is not right on top but a bit moved to the right side uh, whereas the cast on edge should, should be right at the bottom of the cowl I think you can't see it and even if you could it doesn't matter I'm probably going to wear the cowl um, with part of it folded down anyway because it's quite high um, so I don't mind the one row off and I I thought it was quite funny to, to be able to, to knit the last bit of red yarn and then just start the cast off there and you don't have to go back to the beginning of round because nobody's going to notice where the beginning of round was and where I started casting off um, so I'm quite happy with that and I was thinking of already washing it and showing it to you like completely finished and then I could have taken it with me on holiday but I decided not to do that and the reason for that is is that sometimes people are so critical with their own knitting and some people even rip out their knitting because it didn't look good and I just want to show you again I know I've done that quite a few times but when something comes off the needle it's usually not like perfectly um, the stitches aren't perfectly the same size and it's not all looking like perfect <laughs> and I don't mind I'm not a perfectionist anyway but I know that after washing the piece it will look nicer it may not look completely perfect but it will look nicer than it looks now so I just want to show you the way this looks now and you can see how uneven some of the stitches are some are bigger some are smaller and it just doesn't look completely even and also um where the color transitions are it doesn't always look really perfect and as I said it may not look perfect after I've washed it but I'm pretty sure it will look better so uh, I encourage you to try and remember the way this looks now and then the next time I do a proper video I'll um, show this cowl the way it looks once it's been washed I won't block it because it doesn't need blocking I would just wash it and then lay it flat to dry and then move it around a bit um, so because it's four layers of knitting lying on top of each other uh, what you could do is put a towel in between the loop so you don't get any creases while it dries I don't really think it creases a lot but that's what you could do 
Anyway, that's the Remember Cowl knit out of Alpaca Silk Yarn by Hansa Farm. Um, really, really happy with it. And the next proper episode, I'm going to wear it. Um, about that, that video I will um, be filming in three weeks time. Next week, there'll be a special episode about my favorite summer tops, summer pullovers and two cardigans. Uh, I, I actually managed to film that already and it will be released next Monday. Then in two weeks time, there won't be a video. And then in three weeks time, I should be wearing this. Yeah, then on to works in progress. Um, by the way, I have two new cast ons, even though I only finished one project. But that's the way things work. Yeah. Um, the first, I start with socks as usual. I actually knit a few rounds on the two world socks. That's the three worlds pattern. That's a, a bonus pattern from the sock madness. By the way, uh, this, the, this round, which is round number four, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah. Should have run or should run until Wednesday. But when I checked before I started filming, there were only two spots to be filled. So if those two spots are filled before Wednesday, then the round will be over. And maybe, maybe the specs will come out before I leave on holiday. That would be great. Then I don't have to prepare for all the socks that are still possible, but could only um, bring the yarn for the one pair. But Three Worlds is a pattern is a bonus pattern for the sock madness this year and I got the pattern because I finished my round four socks. No, that was the, the bonus for the round three socks and I've added a few rounds, not very many I think, but um, I think the sock has grown a little bit. I'm knitting them for my sister and I have decided, I've talked to her and we decided that I'm not going to knit the whole leg because it's quite long and she's a fan of shorty socks. So it's okay for these not to be shorty socks, but she doesn't need them to be really long. You can see there are rather big uh, spaces with just the background color. And because of that, I'm using the leatherback jacquard technique, which looks like this. So these are the extra stitches that I have to catch the floats. Um, it works out quite nicely because the sock has a lot of stitches already just on the one side I'm using very thin needles 2.0 millimeter needles and um, I started on double pointed needles but I wanted to use those for the sock mantis sock so I put these put this sock on the mini circular needle which I prefer anyway for color work socks and because I'm using such thin needles and with the leather back jacquard stitches I have 90 stitches on the needle I'm using this thing to uh, keep the stitches safe while I'm not knitting. I got that from a friend. I think it's usually used to um, put on cords to keep them from going places they're not supposed to go. But you can use those and just put the needles through and that keeps it perfectly safe. So that's a really nice trick like that. So that's the first pair of sock. Then the next pair of sock is the one I started, I showed you as a new project last week. It's the sock Bigfoot. And it's going to be a huge pair of socks that I knit for a friend's husband. And I'm using this Opal subscription, Opal Abo colorway. And I wanted to do a reinforced heel and toe because the man who's going to get the sock is really tall and he's fairly heavy as well. But I didn't have any of this special yarn that you can use, that you can hold with your yarn to reinforce it. So I thought, what if I use the six-ply sock yarn by Opal instead of the four-ply? It would just be a bit thicker. It wouldn't be like double thickness, but a bit thicker. So I looked through my leftover yarn and I found this yarn, which has also the brown and the gray. It has a little bit of white as well, but I thought, it doesn't really matter. And I'd never knit this yarn with such tiny needles. These aren't quite as tiny. I'm using the seven point, the 2.75 millimeter needles for these socks. That's my favorite needle for just normal plain socks in four ply yarn. And I finished the leg and this is the heel. So you can see it's quite a bit lighter, but 
that's okay and um and it's thicker and it's tighter but it doesn't really look that much different i was a bit worried it would look like huge or, or too thick or something but i think it's okay it looks quite nice and it feels really sturdy and i did a fish lips kiss heel so i didn't have any rounds to go round all the stitches and i'm very happy with it and i'm going to now knit the foot with the um, my main yarn and then i'll do the toe again with the contrast uh, yarn in the six ply so I thought that was really interesting. So that's the socks that I'm knitting at the moment. As I said, waiting for the next round sock madness socks to um, come out. Um, but now my first new cast on for today is not a sock, but it's going to be a leg warmer. So I thought it has a, um, I should show you here with the socks. And I, the reason for these, for starting them now, I wanted new leg warmers anyway. And then a customer came and she lent me uh, tiny circular needles by Knit Pro. That's, that would be Knit Picks uh, in the US. And I had heard that they started producing those mini circular needles, but I had never been able to try them. And so she lent me a little set with several sizes. And the interesting thing is the tips are quite short but they're the same length. So they don't have different lengths like the um, like the Chaogu needles that I usually use. So the Two World sock and also the Bigfoot socks, I'm using the Chaogu needles. And with Chaogu, you have a small tip. You can use a small tip and a long tip. Actually, when you buy the sets, um, you have two short ones and two long ones, which is perfect. So you can knit two socks at the same time if you want. Or you can use two long tips if you have if you use the longest um, cable for example for sleeves or if you had very small socks you could use the two short ones so the knit pro or knit picks tips are a bit longer than the short ones by chaogu but they're shorter than the long ones so that's really interesting um but they work really well so um for me it's a bit difficult to for the left hand i'm not using I'm not used to having a short tip in the left hand, but I'm getting along quite well. I've only started the leg warmer so far. I'm using this colorway from the series Paradise. It's another six ply yarn, like I'm using for the heel and toe of the other socks. And I thought um, this fairly dark color mix would be quite nice to be uh, using or wearing as leg warmers. And I'm just going to do a two by two rib fairly simple so again something that I can just knit without concentrating on it and I can practice using the um, mini circulars and the one thing I do like about them is the fact that they are wood so I love knitting with wooden needles I still love my chagu needles and especially with the smallest sizes I'm quite happy to have the metal ones but for the slightly bigger sizes I think the wooden ones are really nice as well so that's that and then uh, I'm going to show you the gnome, the mystery gnome that I'm knitting. It's a pattern by Sarah Shira, and it's her first gnome that she designed for self-striping yarn. And last week I showed you the colors that I'm using. And if you don't want to see what it looks like, you have to look away now. Um, I showed you the two mystery bits that we did uh, in clue one. And then in clue two, we did this beautiful piece. And uh, in clue three, we sew this together to form a tube. And we also knit this little thingy. <laughs> and then the next clue, we picked up stitches from the upper uh, edge of this tube. And we knit this. And it's so fantastic. And because we've been using short rows anyway, um, we just kept doing short rows. Um, and this is another, um, what's it called in English? Ah, I can't remember the word right now, but it's what I used in the sock mantler socks uh, last week. So um, I was quite used to doing that. And you get to place the front of your gnome wherever you like. So you can do it um, opposite of where you 
started and stopped, but I didn't want to do that. I didn't want this to be the front. So expecting a beard, this color wouldn't be visible. So I moved it um, to have to be for this to be the front of the gnome. So this is supposed to go to the side. And then if you turn the gnome this way, you have these colors. And if you turn it this way, you have these colors. And um, yeah, it looks really interesting. So my idea of what these are is this, I'm trying not to give it away in so many words. And I think we're quite sure that this is this belongs here. <laughs> so if there is, I'm not showing anything anymore. If there's going to be a beard, it will have to be in the last clue, which should come out today. And then uh, I get to finish the little gnome. Yeah, so that's that's exciting. Then the next project I'm showing you again is a little project out of Sock Yarn. It's another Opal subscription colorway. It's the Pattern Battle and I'm knitting the little flax socks pullover. And last week I showed you the finished yoke. And as I said, I started knitting a sleeve. And because it's so small, I not only started, I just finished the first sleeve. So it looks a bit funny right now, but this is one sleeve. Um, really like the way the yarn looks, the colors come out. And I started the second, <coughs> excuse me, started the second sleeve and um, yeah, at some point I'll have a pullover. I think this is the one to two year rolled size, which is quite a big span, I think, one to two years. But um, yeah, we'll see what size I get uh, when I'm done. And oh, by the way, I did the ribbing in the main color because I felt I still have quite a lot of yarn. So I'll finish the second sleeve as well. And then when I <clears throat> knit the front and back down, I can decide whether I have enough yarn to do all the ribbings in this color or actually want to use a contrast color. <coughs> Excuse me. I think I'll quickly have a sip of tea in one of my sister's beautiful um, cups, mugs. <coughs> Maybe I inhaled a bit of yarn, I don't know. <coughs> anyway. So that's that. Then we come to the bigger projects and I'll start off with the um, Lanatus pullover um, where I'm using a colorway inspired by a Hundertwasser um, picture and and this as my main color. And I did not add a lot, but I managed to knit one more pattern onto the front and back. So um, here you can see that this is where the armhole is and I finished one pattern repeat. And I tried it on again and I'm really happy with how it fits. Oh, by the way, this is the back. You can see the short rows here. This is the front. It is going to be rather bigger than smaller for me but that's okay. I've always wanted a loose pullover and uh, the last couple of pullovers I knit, most of them turned out a bit tighter than I planned. So this can be one of the bigger ones. I'm still so happy with how the colors keep changing and um, with these little uh, changing motifs. I think from here on, I'm going to repeat the patterns so there won't be a different one. Um, I think I've done all the different ones. That's what I'm trying to say. And I haven't really measured how many of the patterns I can repeat until it's long enough. But uh, yeah, so this is the Lanatus pullover. <clears throat> and then the biggest project I'm knitting on at the moment is probably my dress, the Mamaki dress by Nicolois. And there I have the yoke. I have one finished sleeve and I did the whole bit of sleeve that I knit straight. And I started doing the first few increase, uh, decreases. So did I do one or two? 
two. I've j I just did the second decrease, so the sleeve is slowly growing, and uh, nothing, nothing much else to say about it. Oops, what happened here? Okay, <clears throat> so the next project is the Squiggle and Stripe Shawl by Stephen West. And there I had hoped to um, finish the colorful stripes so that I only have to use two colors now and I managed to do that. So I finished the middle part of this shawl and um, you start, the shawl starts with an eye cord and then it ends again by casting off the stitches with an eye cord. And the last three stitches, the eye cord stitches are actually put on hold. And now I pick up stitches from this side and knit this way. And again, um, I will have eye, eye cord stitches on both ends. However, and then I'll, I'll probably cast off in with eye cord as well. And then after that, I'm going to pick up stitches from this small side and then knit back and forth with an eye cord edge. And I think at the end, the whole shawl was going to have um, an eye cord edge all around the edges, the way Stephen West loves doing things. And I'm really happy how this is growing and it's such a nice squishy yarn. It's the brushed alpaca by Hansa Farm. It's a very, very, very beautiful yarn. And the next project is my second new cast on, and that's going to be another shawl, which is why I'm showing it now. And that's another mystery knit along. I'm into mystery knit alongs, I tell you. <laughs> I just love making them. So this one is by Susanna IC. It's called A Bloom. And uh, so far there is, there's been one clue out. And uh, the next clue, the next three clues will come out the next Fridays, I think. So you need, um, or we needed either a lace yarn or a fingering weight yarn. I think you could even use the sport weights yarn um, for this shawl. And I chose this yarn, which is called Luxury Lace and used to be produced by Voldaco. They've discontinued the yarn quite some time ago, but I still held on to this skein because it's so beautiful. It's a very light blue and it's very slightly, um, um, what's the word for? It's not the same color. It's not a solid color. It's not really variegated, but it's it's like a tonal, I think. So with lighter, almost white parts and light blue. And of course, I want to do the beaded version. Susanna I see very often does uh, shawls with beads. And with this mystery knit along with the same as with a lot of other of her shawls, you can choose between few beads or more beads or very many beads. And of course, I'm doing the many beads and I picked out these three millimeter beads to go with this yarn and I've cast on. And my sister is doing, is knitting the shawl with me and she uses the same yarn in a different color. Um, and she uses either very few beads or fewer beads. She hasn't made up her mind yet. With clue one, you only use beads if you do the very many bead version. <laughs> so we cast on together and I haven't knit a lot yet, but this is the beginning. And the she said that the shawl is going to be knit sideways. So I knew I was going to cast on five stitches and then you start knitting the pattern. And then, um, so the first clue I think covers quite a bit of shawl. And then the other clues, I am guessing there'll be a lot more lace pattern, probably more beads as well. But for now, it's a fairly simple lace pattern that repeats. Um, this is all I can show you so far. And I've put in three beads so far. And they're not very visible because I again uh, went with beads that have sort of the same color as the yarn. Sort of they're not very obvious, but I really like them. So it's those three beads in there. And this is all I have so far. And I'm using this circular needle that has uh, plastic needle tips. And um, so I've decided this is going to be one of my airplane projects um, because I'm pretty sure nobody's going to um, have a problem with plastic needles. <laughs> Yay! 
yeah, so that's the second new cast on. And as I said, it's a mystery knit along. I want to sort of keep up. I don't have to be exactly on time all the time. Um, and I, I think I was about a week late with casting on. But yeah, I didn't want to wait any longer. So that's that. And then the last project, again, is the knit along Haramaki. I have no idea how much I knit on it since I last showed it to you. It's really difficult to tell now that it's growing longer and longer. And I'm really looking forward to finishing it now. Um, my halfway marker is still fairly high up. So I, again, I'm not quite sure I'm really making it double the length. But it has to grow quite a bit still. But then at some point, I think I'm going to try it on every now and then to see what it looks like around my hips and how it feels around my neck. And then at some point, I'll make a decision to finish it. And I think I've talked about um, wanting to put um, a string or something around one of the edges. And one idea was to um, do a round of eyelets at the end and then cast off and do the string through there. But since then, I've realized that the cast on is not quite as elastic. So I will probably maybe crochet something on onto here where I can pull the string through and then do the cast off very, very stretchily <laughs> um, so that the one edge is very stretchy so I can maybe pull it over my shoulders and it'll be a bit more stretchy around my legs if I wear it like a skirt. And then the other end, I can pull the string through and I can pull it tight either around my neck or around my waist. So that's what I'm thinking of now. I still haven't made up my mind if, if I want to put beads in as well. So um, I have the one black cowl where I have um, a string with beads pulled through one end and then I put in beads into the cast off on the other edge. So I might do that with this one. So still a lot of knitting to be done and then a few decisions and then some more work before it's actually completely done. Okay, I hope I haven't forgotten anything. By the way, the um, flax pullover I forgot to show last week, but I showed it to you this week. And uh, I hope I haven't forgotten anything. I haven't mentioned that I didn't crochet on the summer pullover again. I just kept forgetting. So this is something I will have to do probably after the holiday. And I didn't knit on the skirt. Again, I will do that after the holiday. Um, I will make sure that they really get worked on. Otherwise, I think I showed you everything that I knit on last week. I hope you enjoyed the video. Remember, there won't be one in two weeks and next week will be a special video. And I'll see you again in the video in three weeks time. See you then. Bye.